broadcast time. Make it so. It's me, Mario. I'm Batman. Strong am I with the force. Are you telling me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? You're a wizard, Harry. And welcome to World War G, episode 144. I'm Troy. I'm AJ. So, this week's list, um, we're talking TV shows. All right. Uh, TV shows that probably went on a little bit past their expiration date. How wooed. (laughs) (laughs) I thought it was appropriate. (laughs) It was appropriate. Um, And these are, yeah, 18 terrible TV shows that went on way too long. So... Uh, I'll read the title, and we'll see if we agree or disagree. For, oh, boy, we're starting out strong. Uh, number 18, Glee. Did you watch any of Glee? Not one of si- their six seasons. I watched the first season. Huh? Kind of into it. Okay. Is that because it kind of reminds you a little bit of Community? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. But I dropped off after the second season. Um, any particular reason why? <sighs> It, it just I, it I just lost interest. Yeah. yeah. Um. To see, after a semi-solid but goofy first season, Glee quickly went off the rails. The characters became gross parodies of themselves, and there appeared to be an incredibly forced effort for the show to tackle every hot button issue of the time. Halfway through season two, it became abundantly clear that Glee had used up all its best material in the first season and a half. Uh, there was nowhere left to go that didn't feel repetitive, but the show went on another four years, <laughs> felt which felt like 40. They're like, ha, we're going to stick it to you, yeah. force this down your throat. <laughs> like, see, okay, that's what I liked best about some of these older TV shows like Saved by the Bell or The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is they tackled these tough issues, but they sprinkled them in there, you know? And yeah. even when they did, I liked the one – I'm reminded of the one from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air after they talked about like you know pills and taking uh, caffeine pills mm-hmm. as well as Sub by the Bell. I think they did one as well yeah. that Zach Morris yeah. took. Classic, yeah. classic scene right? Saved by the Bell. Yeah. But they afterwards they show – they bring up this hotline that you can call mm-hmm. or they kind of touch on a subject that's pretty sensitive but handle it in a pretty tactful yeah. way. But it was just like maybe one a season, if that. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. Yeah, Glee, it was like every episode. It's like, oh, this person's gay, or now this person's gay, and oh, this person's being bullied. You know, it's okay. We get it. Yeah, all right. Number 17, Desperate Housewives. Can't say I've ever seen Moving on. Episode, right? <laughs> it's got a pretty big cast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, kind of an all-star cast there, but move on. Number 16, Awkward. Seen that one? I can't say I have either. Me neither. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. And it's weird because I've seen a lot of TV. Me like, too. I, I never even heard of that. No. That's awkward. At least, yet, <laughs> <laughs> at least the other two I heard about. Yeah. Uh, number 15, Bones. I watched the first five seasons and kind of just because like my my mom uh, you know and others were into it at the time and then she got bones she became more intelligent and more intuitive when it she came got to bones certain... well yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> boots <laughs> um but no she got really pretty good at savvy at picking up on other people what they were trying to say to her she didn't come across as like this alien type of person you know what i mean where she's like oh now was that offensive wait did i make you upset oh so i and then like she was doing better and then all of a sudden she went on this like one trip or something and did an excavation and then came back and was the same old bones yeah so i i never saw the show Mm -hmm. so was her character that a pa- like a paleontologist that would go i mean she would look at bones and from them she could deduce what happened booth his character the angel or whatever you know david boreanaz yeah yeah he um he was the fbi agent that was working with these as he dubbed them squints 
like these geeky people that were helping him solve cases mm. and crimes. And then okay. he ends up okay. eventually falling in love and they get married. Right. And, okay. And so on. So kind of a kind of a castle type of situation. Mm-hmm. Castle castle esque. Yeah. Which I wouldn't doubt will appear on this list. All right. Um number fourteen, Dexter. Uh I did see a few seasons of Dexter. Same. Um and it was it was good. It was solid for the first couple. Um I liked that there was for every season there was kind of this serial killer that he was going after and mm-hmm. it, was, it was interesting. That he could actually like somewhat relate to. Yeah. And he's just like, oh, delving into and diving into their psyche was a little bit easier because yeah. he related. Uh but like they said here, by the end of Dexter, he wasn't an interesting, morally ambiguous anti hero anymore. Dexter was a bland superhero without powers, surrounded by a cast of morons and one dimensional monsters. Now I would say the season with um him and uh John Lithgow, mm-hmm. I think it was like the fourth season. That is some of the best TV I've seen ever, I think. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't seen the fourth season of Dexter with John Lithgow, I would yeah, At check it watch out. Watch up to that. <laughs> yeah, watch up to that season. You know? Okay. Uh, next, number 13, 24, uh, another TV show I never watched. Neither did I. I know it made, it did kind of like what X-Files did and came back for a little bit, Mm -hmm. but. It is an interesting premise though. I got to give it that. Um, Mm -hmm. and the fact that the 24 meant it was, each episode was an hour in this day. So yeah. So 24 episodes, 24 hours in a day. Is that but, because they think that a case is going to go cold like after that amount of time? Or? Well, no. I think it's – Because I thought it was like three days. Um, like $70. Yeah, there you go. I think – I swear every season was an hour in – was was like a day. So mm-hmm. like the first season would be like the 24 hours in that day. The next season, 24 hours in that day. I think. Okay. But – that's a hard premise to continue on and on. Right. And I think that's where that show floundered mm-hmm. is people watched it for the – like, oh, that's kind of an interesting premise. Okay. They kind of hopped on the bandwagon. And then after it's like, okay, well, that's – we get it. Let's, let's do something different. Mm-hmm. So uh, number 12. Here's one. Hey, one I've actually seen. Same here. King of Queens. With Kevin James. Um, I – I I thought this show was pretty good. It was around the t- same time as like uh, everybody loves Raymond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Set in the same universe, by the way. Oh, those really? two shows, yeah, okay. they appeared on each other's shows. But anyway, um, yeah. Once he, I, I enjoyed the show. I thought it was funny. Mm-hmm. But once his cousin came on, this there in the picture, yeah, uh, in the red sweater there, he, it 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 fell off. It fell off the rails. Because really he, he had to kind of keep one upping him, yeah. you know, and they their shenanigans got bigger and bigger. Yeah. Especially remember that one where he's racing him to see if he even gets a job, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I get that, um, but I guess because I've only you, this is a show that you don't really need to have seen every episode to understand. Right. You know, you just like, yeah, you just right. come in and like watch a couple <laughs> episodes. Is that all the episodes that I watched and not that I watched? It didn't bother me, or it didn't seem like it went on too long. No. Um, yeah, that's not a show that you really need to think too much about. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of which, number eleven, Full House. Yes. Um, now I'm I'm curious because I I watched when it first debuted. I think I watched pretty much every season. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure when exactly they thought it fell off. Um. Let's see. Full House is a childhood favorite of many. This doesn't keep it from objectively being a terrible piece of TV. Ouch. Full House, yeah. yeah. Full House is a product of its time, and it fit perfectly within the ABC's family-friendly TGIF lineup from the 1990s. While some of the TGIF entries had depth to them and can still be enjoyed, Full House simply cannot be logged into either category. Full House was less of a TV show and more of a catchphrase factory. The Central Family and Kimmy Gibbler weren't so much lovable as they were loud. Every single member of the eponymous house was designed to be a larger-than-life character in some way. It wasn't endearing. It was plain exhausting. Full House certainly didn't deserve the eight seasons 
it received in its original run. We're not even going to touch on the god awful Netflix revival, oh. whose value is entirely based in nostalgia. Yeah. Uh, okay, I guess I see what they're getting at. It's one of those shows you can watch it once and be done with it. It's not one of the ones that you'd actually want to go back and yeah. revisit this, you know. And that's true. Maybe they could have, you know, been good with like maybe three or four seasons and yeah. wrapped it up. But yeah, yeah, they're right. It it went on. Yeah. It was a catchphrase factory. It let's was. Let's be honest. Yeah. Like every every character had their own catchphrase and cut it out. Yeah. Wait, let's see. Let's see. Okay, so Joey had cut it out. Yep. And then you've got Danny Tanner. What was his? Danny Tanner. Uh, Any type of like, what was the? Well, his whole thing was cleaning, right? He's obsessed with, with cleaning. Cleaning as well as like, no, on his uh, morning show. Wake Up San Francisco? Yeah, Wake Up San Francisco. Wake Up San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's what we should do at the beginning of each of these episodes. <laughs> Wake up, World War G. Like, <laughs> it's more of a call out to our listeners as well as to ourselves. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Wake up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what? We're on? <laughs> then, uh, you know, DJ Tanner had, oh, my Lanta, she said all the time. Mm-hmm. Stephanie had, uh, how rude. Yeah. Uh, Michelle had, you got it, dude. Yeah. Or, oh, she had like a ton of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's me, Michelle. And... and uh, oh. What's the what's his bucket was obsessed with his hair? Jesse. Jesse. Uncle Jesse. Yeah. Yeah. And he had the Don't ripper. Touch the hair. And he had the rippers. That's right. Jesse and the rippers. Yeah. Yep. 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 That, and see, that's enough of full house. I'm good for the next like five years. Me too. Yeah. I'm like, all right. right. I'll never have to <laughs> think about it again. Yeah. All right, number ten. Prison break. I would agree with this full heartedly. I did watch um almost every season. Did they break out of prison? They sure did. Then what do you do after that? Then they had to try to get away, and that's when I stopped watching because it wasn't that interesting. Plus, okay, really cool, interesting premise. His brother goes to pri- uh, goes to prison, so then his younger brother hey, it says, hey, I'm going to tattoo myself with the prison schematics and all these different details about the, pr- the ins and outs of the prison yeah. on, my ta- on my body. Mm. So then he goes in, infiltrate, you know, does a crime, commits a crime, goes into prison with his brother to get him out. And each episode, it was kind of cool because they would have like some sort of uh, problem or issue, which is difficult to maintain um, because some of the episodes were weaker when they were actually managing to get out and trying to break through a wall. He had a skull tattoo. And if he drew that skull tattoo and put it up against the light, then he could shine it onto where he had to break the certain points. Huh. And I don't know. That's interesting. It, it was all right, but once they got out of prison, that's when I kind of tapered off yeah. because they tried to still do that whole, <gasps> we have some sort of emergency yeah, that we have yeah, to, res- yeah. resolution that we have to resolve. Yeah. You know? And it's once just, they did the prison break. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And even like, I've already heard the ending of it and it wasn't all that great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I've heard that like people, they're almost as disappointed as they were with like Lost, mm. with how this one ended. Too. Yeah. You see, you you kind of shoot yourself in the foot when you have a show called Prison Break, and they break out of prison, and then it continues on, and it continues on. Yeah. It's like what then? That's, what do you do? We've then? talked about this before that Gotham is going to suffer from that same problem. Um, once Batman becomes Batman, oh, that's the end of your show. Have you seen the teaser? I have. For, oh my gosh! Yeah, it that outfit looks ridiculous. It, he's like a little ninja. Yeah, it yeah. looks so freaking stupid. Uh huh. Alfred's trying to talk him down. So yeah, like, no, 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 you shouldn't fight. Yeah, I must protect my city. He's <laughs> like, nope, no. nope, nope. I'm out. Yeah. I am out. Yeah. All right, number nine, True Blood. Never seen it. I saw a few episodes, and that was enough to get the gist. This this was probably like, around the whole Twilight era. And yeah, it was. They got all those fans from Twilight mm-hmm. to watch this show. This was a rated R version of Twilight. Yeah. It was like, okay, I get it. Blood and boobs. Fantastic. Oh. Yeah. Boring. Moving on. Um, number eight. Homeland. I always wanted to watch this show because I liked the um, – what's the guy's name, the main guy? Um, name? Oh, what is his name? It's He was in this other TV show called Life yeah. that only like went on like uh, two seasons or so. Yeah, I can't remember. It's Claire Danes and 
uh, dang, I can't remember. He's a redheaded dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember his name. But yeah, I never saw um, Homeland. Uh, but apparently, after spoiler alert, the redheaded guy is shown to be a double agent or sleeper agent. That was like the big reveal. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess after that, then again, what do you do? Right. Where do you go from there? Because mm-hmm. I think the first season was them trying to figure out you know, because he was, I think he was captured in war and like, did he turn on to their side? And yeah, the whole first season was them trying to figure that out. Well, that's okay. Unless a lot of TV shows suffer from this problem is they have this arc and they have this great arc in mind. But the only problem is, is it goes out one or two seasons. And then unless you've introduced a new, more impending, bigger threat. Yeah. Then they can't continue on their story. Right. Or it just seems kind of forced. If they didn't already plan ahead, mm-hmm. you know. Um, number seven, Seventh Heaven. I watched probably more of this show than I should have, yeah. being a uh, male. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I watched it because I had a huge crush on that on the, on the blonde chick. Yeah, um, which one? They're all blonde. I know <laughs> the Aryan race. The, the <laughs> <laughs> So it's the Seventh Reich. Yes. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. The one on the left there, far left. Which is the name of our episode now, right? <laughs> <laughs> the Seventh Reich. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, once, you know, once they start growing up and they start getting like, adding like little Too kids. Mature, and, yeah. Yeah. It's like, eh, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. See, that's another thing that TV shows need to think about is if you have kids and modern family is quickly crashing into this problem when you have kids and they start growing up you you know it 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 takes um some of the i guess some of the interest out Mm -hmm. because like oh look at these cute little kids oh they're being funny blah blah when they start growing up and start having like teenage issues and sex and drinking you're like "Eh, well mm, well that mm. can actually work in their favor if played right. If played because right. Because then you do have you, a lot yeah. more characters, you know, in, like that you've seen grow up and mature. The only problem is, is a lot of these characters, they don't outgrow what their original role was on the show. Right. You know, so if they, if you had like a character like Manny that was still like, you know, oh, like, let's help with this. I don't know. I don't like my, you know. Yeah. It's not as interesting as, okay, him doing other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and plus when the kids start growing up and their lives start getting out into the tabloids and mm-hmm. you kind of – you view you start to view them a little differently. Very true, very true. Ariel Winter. Just Google her, by the way. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. Number six, The O.C. Um, never saw it. Liked the – like the, the song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, while the OC was a melodramatic but self-aware teen soap in its first season, the subsequent three seasons were an an exercise in boredom. The OC stopped being fun, a fun bit of escapism after its inaugural outing, choosing to ramp up the ridiculousness of the plot while pulling the tone down to truly depressive levels. Oh, jeez. I have heard in certain geek circles that I would enjoy that show. Mm -hmm. Um... Because I think one or a couple of them are like a superhero fan. And so they like recreated the Spider-Man kiss from the first spider I'm like, eh, eh, that's not enough to get me to no, watch it. Yeah, no. uh, number five. Uh, the Douchebags. Oh, sorry. I mean Entourage. I thought this was just a movie. I didn't realize it was no, a TV just, show. Yes, it was a TV show. Because I've seen all these like commercials leading up to it. Yeah. But... Yeah, it's it's a TV show where the premise, the main guy was an actor, and the rest of the guys are like his posse. His squad. His, his, yeah, his, his squad. Crew. His entourage, if you will. Yeah. And one of the guys was his manager, and they were always trying to, you know, deal with these ridiculous first world problems, you know, and... Uh, it, trying to sell it as if we can all relate. Yeah, yeah. And the executive producer of it is Mark Wahlberg, and it's kind of based on his life oh, when he started in hollywood never seated yeah right yeah Jeez. um number four how i met your mother 
I've seen the whole entire series. Friends rip off. <laughs> um, <laughs> More or less. <laughs> uh, yeah, I this just one, never... This one might have suffered from the same thing that they were talking about with um, Full House, where everybody had their own catchphrase and their certain thing that they did and they were known for. Like, suit up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, that's the problem with sitcoms. And a lot of the time, if they start really going long... You know, you you tend to get repetitive. You have to keep amping things up and keep getting more and more ridiculous. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, and this one. I mean, this one was all right, except for I was a little disappointed in the big reveal. Okay, so um, it shows down the down the way that uh, let's see, Barney and what's her bucket? What's the girl far too far right? The brunette or the redhead? A brunette. Uh, Colby Smolders. Yes. That they end up getting together, but then they end up getting a divorce. Uh, Ted, who goes and thinks that he's found the one and your mother and whatnot, it ends up that those kids were like, oh, hey, you should have been with Robin the entire time. Mm. So then he goes back and then he bling, brings her the blue French horn from the beginning and then they get together. And mm. that's how he met your mother. Mm. Yeah. It's no it's no did she get off the plane mm-hmm. from the finale of Friends. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> did she get off the plane? Uh yeah, I, I never I never got into that. It was, it was alright. I did like that Ted was an architect. I could I could relate. <laughs> and also it was really funny because uh Marshall, he was a big Vikings fan. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> so. I love Allison Hannigan though. Uh huh. The redhead. I yeah. I've always liked her. Um, ever since her Buffy and American Pie days. Uh, number three. And I don't know about this one. Family Guy. Okay, I wouldn't agree with this. I wouldn't agree with it either. No, unless they throw Simpsons in there. I mean, it's a cartoon. Right. You know, I mean, same with The Simpsons. You can do literally anything. Yeah. Nothing's yeah off limits or yeah. out of bounds or whatever. And Family Guy, say what you will about Simpsons, but Family Guy is still incredibly entertaining and clever and, and clever and really funny yeah to this day so no i i don't agree with that one uh number two two and a half men yes yes i would agree with this one as well uh i watched probably more than you probably should probably more than i should have same as here. a male yeah same with <laughs> <laughs> um no, I watched no, probably this was a man based like it, yeah, TV show. It was, yeah, with Charlie scene because he didn't have to act. That's who he was. Yeah, that's who he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm like this is he's a, typecast for this. Yeah, a a rich um, uh, guy who's in show business who sleeps with a lot of women. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's not really in show business. He just creates. Jingles. He, write, he writes jingles. Right? Yeah, well, that's kind of show business. But like, he only works ten minutes a day, and then he gets to just drink and so, sleep around. The rest Charlie of the time. Sheen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe how much money he made. Oh, I know. And what's it's his sickening. bucket? What's the what's the kid's name? Um, the half man of two and a half men. Mm-hmm. Uh, Charlie Sheen, John Cryer, Ag- and Agus Tone Jones, Angus, Angus, Angus Jones. Yeah. Yep. 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 He shot himself in the foot. Yeah. Like, he was making so much money an episode for only having to be, like, make cam- do cameos. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, yeah, this is stupid. And Seth MacFarlane wasn't having it. Yeah, that, that show fell apart. Was it? Wait, not Seth uh, MacFarlane. What's the, what's the director's name? Um, Did the same for Big Bang Theory and some of these other ones. Yeah. Oh, what is Mike his name? Mike and Molly. What the heck is his name? Um, What was the creator's name? <sighs> He's huge in, in the TV business. Oh, yeah. Ah, I can't remember his name. But anyway, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. But, it, it, yeah, it's, it was crazy. It's yeah, once, once Charlie Sheen went off the deep end and watched... And then they get Ashton Kutcher in. Yeah, yeah. It, it was not good. It limped along. Uh, number one, one I fully agree with, Smallville. Yeah. Yes. I was into this show... Uh-huh. I'm telling you, the first few seasons, I was in, man. Yeah. Like, this is awesome. Little young Superman running around, just getting his powers, learning what to do. Great. Oh, look, Lex Luthor. They're actually friends. Awesome. Okay, Lana Lang. Great. Then 
then they got out of Smallville and to Bigville. To Bigville. <laughs> Metropolis. Yeah. Uh hashtag Bigville. And it just it wasn't Smallville anymore. It was like the adventures of Lois and Clark. Okay. Again. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that one. And that, that was just a continuation quick. of it. Yeah. Okay, so there is there's our list. Um, do you agree? Do you disagree? Uh, leave us a comment. Um, yeah, are there any free, other? Feel free to tell us any others. Yeah. Yeah. Any other TV shows you think went way past its its time? time? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's take a break, and when we come back, we're gonna run through these uh, news stories. We got. Nintendo and Robert Downey Jr. and Wolf Among Us, Magic School Bus, Stephen, and so much more. Stephen King, all kinds of good stuff. So, we'll be back right after this. Are you feeling nostalgic about your music listening needs? Do you like the tonal quality that only a record can provide? Then go check out Lavender Vinyl, located at 123 25th Street, Ogden, Utah. Yeah, go talk to Kylie or Blake. They have a large selection of new and used records. Uh, they will also buy your old records, maybe the ones that are just sitting up there in the attic gathering dust. And if you can't find anything, they'll be more than happy to pre-order it for you. Now you can always find them at lavendervinyl at gmail.com. You can also check out their website, lavendervinyl.com, or give them a call on the phone like a normal person at 385-240-0336. Be sure to tell them that World War G sent you. Now back to the episode. And we're back. Um, so I've got some really good news. Yes. The Wolf Among Us Season 2 is arriving next year. Hmm. Telltale Games will release the second season of Wolf Among Us, a Telltale Games series, an adventure game based on the comic series Fable. In 2018, the developers uh, revealed that the game was in the works as part of their summer 2017 update um, embedded above. Did you get a chance to check out the trailer or... No, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. But while, while you're talking, I'll, I'll check it out. Deal. Um... Bigsby Wolf, the hero of the first game, returns for the sequel. Uh, expect to uh, expect to make more tough choices in a darkly tingling fairy tale world when it's launched next year. Fans of Wolf Among Us first season have um, pleaded Telltale with a sequel request since it wrapped up three years ago. Has it really been that long? Oh man, <laughs> um, Telltale made light of this in the video update highlighting tweets from the fans begging for more of the um from this world a Reese, let's see as recently as last week the studio denied any hints that the second season was in the works throwing fans off their trail with some success in an ask me anything early earlier this year telltale um communications head john stuffer gave fans hope that the Wolf Among Us would return. Here he said, um, We have been asked over and over again for some insight into the mysterious uh, myster- mystery at the end of the final um, of the final episode of A Wolf Among Us. Um, something I've always wanted to return to, uh, wanted to admit it while, let's see, something I've always wanted to admit is that while we do have a clear answer to who was who at the end of the story, we had also agreed to keep it a mystery for fans to ponder on their own. Definitely fun to see all the theories pour out and excited um, excited to pay our new noir story with a Femi tale twist. Hmm. Um, the conversation, let's see. The conversation restarted this week when Stafford tweeted about his own wishes. Uh, he says, We'd kill to step back into the world of the wolf among us, and someday we know our fans would too. Um, he wrote, just after saying this, he wrote again, um, Your voice and your passion will never go unheard here at Telltale. 
Also, which you might be more interested to hear, Troy, um, Batman, The Enemy Within, a second season of Telltale Batman series, which debuted in August 2016. Mm -hmm. The first episode will launch August 8th, so not too long ago, and features new villains like John Doe. Telltale also treated The Walking Dead, or teased The Walking Dead fourth uh, finale season which will com- um, complete uh, Clementine's story in 2018 hmm. have you had a chance to play Wolf Among Us or any of these Telltale games no not yet they're kind of choose your own adventure and if you're looking for one where you become invested in the characters and the story it's very story driven yeah um, it's it's a fantastic one, and I was drawn in with from this first one with the Wolf Among Us. Um, have you read the comics at all, by chance? Uh, the Wolf Among Us? Mm, uh, no, 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 not the <coughs> Wolf the... Among Us. Fable. Oh, what oh, it's based on? Oh, Fable. Uh, yeah. Have I? Maybe. It's I'm got sure. kind of like these different characters, like fairy tales, basically, but darker and grittier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and these other characters, you know, they're a heck of a lot. Like, yeah, darker and just kind of have backstories that you weren't expecting. All right. Yeah, eventually I'll I'll get around to it. Um. All right. From one video game to another, <clears throat> I have some bad news. According to Nintendo, Mario is no longer a plumber. What? As spotted by Kotaku, the character's profile on Nintendo's official Japanese language website states that Mario used to be a plumber. That is what it says. All around sporty, whether it's tennis, baseball, soccer, or car racing, he does everything cool. As a matter of fact, he also seems to have worked as a plumber a long time ago. The Nintendo website also features profiles on other prominent characters in the Super Mario Bros. game series, including Luigi, Princess Peach, Toad, Bowser, Yoshi, Daisy, Wario, Waluigi, Rosetta, Bowser Jr., Boo, Donkey Kong, and Diddy Kong. When Mario was introduced in the 1981 Donkey Kong arcade game, the character was known only as Jumpman. Video game designer uh, Shigeru Miyamoto said that the character was originally a carpenter since the game... Uh, took place on a construction site. Mario was like Jesus. (laughs) Mario is Jesus. Mario is Jesus. Oh, man. Uh, So Nintendo played up the... Took place on... Sorry, hang on. Uh, Construction site. Mario Brothers introduced Mario's brother Luigi in 1983. And the game took place underground. It introduced the concept of warp pipes... So Nintendo played up the theme and made the characters plumbers instead. Mario was um, ex- <laughs> explicitly depicted as a plumber in the Super Mario Brothers Super Show from 1989. Come on, paisanos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take one step and then again. <laughs> yeah. Get on YouTube and look at the <laughs> the the Super Mario Brothers Super Show song. You'll you'll you'll, th- wow. you'll thank us later. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and in the 1993 live action Super Mario Brothers film, in his history, Mario has been a construction worker, referee, pilot, doctor, race car driver, chef, archaeologist, toy maker, street dancer, theme park owner, and Olympic athlete. If he's no longer a plumber, it's likely by choice. And he should be fine out there on the open market. What is he going to do for a job? What's his next job going to be? Um, male stripper. I was going to go with president. You know, no, all right. <laughs> Anybody can run for president. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> you can be a portly little Italian man and you can still run for president. Not yeah. even born in this country, I don't think. Yeah. Wait, wait, Mario. Where is your birth certificate? <laughs> <laughs> Where's your green card, Mario? Yeah. Where's your papers? Um, some more interesting news. The tri- uh, the Trinity that started it all in Iron Man will return ten years later for the next Avengers movie, and maybe the one after that too. 
question mark, exclamation point, exclamation point, question mark. <laughs> I might have just had those in. Uh, Robert Downey Jr., Tony Stark, Iron Man, Gwyneth Paltrow, Pe- uh, Pepper Potts, and John Favreau, uh, Happy Hogan, uh, got this whole Marvel Cinematic University party started in 2008. Both um, Robert and John shared the the same adorable photo. Ugh. Adorable. Adorable. I hate uh, that word. In fin- <clears throat> Infinity Trinity in Atlanta, um, Avengers Infinity War, which opens 2018. So you check out this picture here. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I think it's just like Robert Downey Jr. is kind of like yeah. being yeah. peculiar. You know, everybody else is like just like posing. Just normal. Fine. Yeah, smile. Yeah, and then there's. there's He's him. doing his derp face. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, well, I just smelled something horrible. <laughs> um, look at that goofball. Avengers 3 title Avengers Infinity War has um, already finished filming. So why share this photo now? Um, Avengers 4 is now filming in Atlanta. So either this is Avengers 4 and they're just calling it Infinity War, Marvel's original call. Um, calling the two movies Infinity War Part 1 and Part 2, or it's a throwback to Infinity War. Um, Firming, let's see, filming, even if it's a throwback to earlier years, they could still be in Avengers 4 together. We wouldn't mind. Downey and Favreau both had sizable roles opposite Tom Holland in Spider-Man Homecoming. And spoilers, the ending also featured a cameo from Paltrow in the long-awaited return of Tony's better half. By who? Long-awaited right? by who? Yeah. Not me. All right. Will Tony and Pepper be engaged in the Infinity War? Will there even be time for that um, kind of lighting with the uni- universe at stake? And so many other questions. So Avengers Infinity War is opening May 4th, 2000. That's, that's kind of interesting. May the 4th, you know, um, 2018. Yep. And then Avengers 4 is now filming and will be released May 3rd, 2019. You imagine being those those actors and everything and like, all right, we finished Infinity War. Holy crap, that took forever. Okay, great. You know, like, okay, guys, um, Avengers 4. Films in like six months. Mm-hmm. See you then. You're yeah. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> be sure to uh, be sure to drink your protein and work out. Yeah. Gosh <laughs> dang it! Like, I just want a pizza. I yeah. want a whole pizza. Why can't I have that yet? And then there's like John Favreau. His character's like, all right, like, cool. Happy, yeah. Happy's like, mm. <laughs> mm, whole pizza. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. I'm- so. Let me get this straight. They're they're doing Infinity War, and then they are doing Avengers Four. Is that what they're calling it? Yeah. Or it's been dubbed until yeah, they dubbed. Come up with that. Yeah, Avengers until they come 4, up yeah. with what a title they're going to yeah. use. So that's the next installment. Aren't they going to do any others before then? Uh, yeah. I mean, I know they've got like Black Panther. Yeah, yeah, Thor, Black Panther. Um, I think there's another one after Black Panther, but I can't think. Oh. I think it's Ant Man and the Wasp. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. I think it's that one. Yeah. So is Infinity War kind of fizzling out with the originals? I think and so. Moving on to you know, so. Bucky being the. Would you like to see? I feel like if they did show um, Robert Downey Jr. and what's her bucket, Gwen Paltrow, them getting married, it would remind me too much of. Like, oh, what was that one movie? The Fantastic Four, mm. where the wedding gets interrupted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and I know they'd probably handle it better than Fantastic Four, but still. Yeah, I, I don't. She better not have too much air, like, time. <laughs> I, I just don't like Gwyneth Paltrow, so Is she, the less I see of her, the better. So she's got still got her superpower abilities, apparently? I don't know. Right. Because the last sure. time we left her was in Iron Man three. Yeah, she was all extremist out. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. She didn't seem like she did in Spider Man. No. Yeah. yeah. I hate Gwyneth Paltrow so much. She's <laughs> she's she's so arrogant. 
Yeah. And she has that whole stupid goop website and where she's talking about, you know, these these jade crystals that you that you can stick up your vagina. I've not heard of this. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and it'll do something to you, good vibes or something I don't know. Good vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Picking up good vibrations. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And then today I learned that one of the treatments she does, instead of acupuncture, she has live bees sting her. No way. Because apparently, oh, oh this is true. Yeah. Because apparently, according to her, bee venom is like a cure-all. Like really? she had a. It's like the Windex. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like she had a, a cesarean uh, scar. Um, and it like stung her on the scar and she claimed that it like, what's this like a 19, oh, you know what I mean? Like leeches yeah, you right? know, can be <laughs> used to take out anything that you might have. Yeah. Oh, that's true. By the way, you can go look it up. It's, it's all true. That's, that's <sighs> bizarre. Yeah. She just launched her goop magazine. Um, you think it would be something else, but <laughs> Yeah. Can't stand that woman. Um, okay. <clears throat> uh, ABC reportedly has concerns about Marvels and humans. Sticking with the Marvel universe, a new report suggests ABC has some concerns over Marvel TV's and human series, and it has caused a bit of tension between the two Disney companies, according to Variety, uh, which cites unnamed sources. Quote, concerns over quality of Inhumans episodes, both the special effects of early cuts and the underpinning scripts, were a source of contention. The IMAX box office numbers will do little, little to reverse that narrative, which could be, uh, sorry, and could dissuade future such hybrids strategies. The report continues. So far, the Inhumans episodes that have been shown in IMAX theaters have brought in an underwhelming estimate of $2.6 million. The unique venture between Marvel and ABC, which includes premiering the television series in IMAX theaters, didn't quite work out as expected, and may have stunted any chance of something similar happening in the future. The series faced an uphill battle from the very moment ABC released the first look at the cast, with fans ridiculing the costumes and comparing comparing them to terrible cosplay. Not only that, the teaser trailer didn't do justice to Medusa's animated hair, and the director didn't even like the first trailer that was released. In summary, Inhumans lacked a certain something that every other property in the Marvel Cinematic Universe has had. I have not ha- heard good things about this show. Neither have I. Early reviews are out, and they are not good. No. I'll be surprised if this one lasts a season. Really? Yeah. Which is kind of a shame, but they, they, need, they need to up their game. They should have stuck with their original idea and done Inhumans as a movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That way you can do better special effects. You have a bigger budget. It's a one-time thing. You know, maybe include the Guardians of the Galaxy in there. You're not forced to draw out the story of characters that nobody knows about. Yeah, exactly. You know, you could do it. Yeah, like Guardians of the Galaxy. People never knew about them, but it worked out perfect for them. And people wouldn't be complaining about, you know, the terrible costume looking like cosplay because you'd have a movie budget where you can actually have right. good costumes. And yeah. 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 That the pinch pennies where they can, Troy. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Um, The Magic School Bus rides again. Yes. (laughs) Uh, Is the latest in the modern reboots of decades-old series that we get to show our little ones in our... uh, (laughs) As you played it out, that's awesome. (laughs) Um, The little ones in our lives. The new adventures are coming to Netflix September 29th, so just in like two weeks, and we'll see Miss Frizzle, voiced by Lily Tomlin, now going Sweet. by pr- um, Professor Frizzle. Okay. Ooh, Professor Frizzle. Right, yeah. She's um, in college. She's taking college <laughs> kids on adventures. <laughs> no, they're still the younger kids. They're, they look like <laughs> the same kids all over again, just different animation. Mm, yeah. Um, handing over the classroom and the bus keys to 
Walker Vale School to her little sister, taking on this task this new school year full of outrageous and impossible lesson plans is uh, Felicity Frizzle, voiced by Kate McK- uh, McKinnon. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, who seems to wield the same rea- uh, reality-bending sorcery powers over this magic school bus. Uh, we're guessing it's similar to the let's see, hereditary magic li- uh, lineage in Harry Potter. Oh, that's a good guess. Uh, listen closely, and you might even notice the familiar voice of Lynn uh, Manuel McGray, uh, who sings the updated version of the show's theme song. So they're they're staying true to the original, which is kind of nice. Mm. Uh, we're thrilled that this um, this adds to the growing list of animated reboot classic shows like Ducktales and Voltron allowing us to share a bit of our ch- uh, childhood with our children, nieces, nephews, or frankly, just uh, feel like a kid again. Yeah, it looked like they had all the same kids in there. Look like I saw Ralphie and 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 the black one and uh, the Asian one <laughs> and the you blonde the blonde white girl and uh, yeah. the nerdy kid. I don't The only name I ever remembered was Ralphie. Mm-mm. I don't remember the other kids names. Yeah, I love the Magic School Bus. That was something you watched when you were home sick from school. And it taught you so much. I even watched it in school. My teacher sometimes when they just didn't care and didn't want to like do a lesson, they just like popped on that and we'd watch that show and then Bill Nye mm-hmm. and Arthur. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not so much Arthur. Maybe not. Yeah. Not so much that one. But the other two, I still know thanks to Mrs. Frizzle, you know, what happens when you run too long. <laughs> And then you had, they had to go out and vacuum the muscles and get yep. rid of that. Whole, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I remember that. Um, this is like a trip down memory lane. I like the animation, but if you listen, I can't stand the new Mrs. Frizzle. Really? Felicity Frizzle. I can't stand her voice. Yeah. I only watched it with the sound off, so. It does look like they go on a lot of like similar adventures and mm-hmm. all over the place. But I'd worry that this show might have an agenda. Mm. Just from the just from the trailer, you know what I mean. I'm all for like going green and, and being environmentally friendly. But I hate when it's like shoehorned and just like shoved in your face. Oh, I thought I thought maybe like Mrs. Frizzle's uh, sister was like a lesbian or something, <laughs> <laughs> which makes sense because Kate McKinnon talks her and Kate McKinnon's a lesbian. But yeah, so I wouldn't doubt if somewhere happens. they throw that in there. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I just I just would hate to see it ruined. But the animation looks pretty yeah. spot on. Well, the first one, no, the first one really didn't have a message. I don't think, no. not that I remember. Captain Planet did. Though. Well, yeah, <laughs> the whole show was one big message. <laughs> we might have to do like watch the first episode when it drops in like, yeah. two weeks. That'd be mm. kind of fun. I'll watch it. All right. Um. So from. One side of scale to the other. Yeah. From Magic School Bus to it. Um, <laughs> St- Stephen King is fascinated, quote unquote, by people's reactions to its underage orgy. Now, yeah. the film does not have an underage orgy. The book, however, the does. The book does. Yeah. A particular scene in Stephen King's novel, It, uh, which, revol- which involves children participating in an orgy. I'll be running out tomorrow to get my copy. Uh, <laughs> has been left out of both the television and film adaptations. I wonder why. Hmm. But it's still causing a stir online. Now, in response to an inquiry regarding an old interview in which he discussed the scene, King says he's fascinated by what he feels is a misplaced focus by readers and critics. Uh, Vulture recently unearthed an old statement from King regarding the scene. He says, I wasn't really thinking of the sexual aspect of it, the author stated in 2013. So, I'm not that old of an interview. Yeah. Four years ago. The book dealt with, excuse me, the book dealt with childhood and adulthood, 1958 and grown-ups. The grown-ups don't remember their childhood. None of us remember what we did as children. We think we do, but we don't remember it as it really happened. Inevitably, the losers knew they had to be together again. 
The sexual act connected childhood and adulthood. It's another version of the glass tunnel that connects the children's library and the adult library. Times have changed since I wrote the scene, and there is now more sensitivity to those issues. Okay. When Vulture reached Sounds out... Like justifying a little bit. A little bit. When Vulture reached out for a statement from King, he responded, That sounds like my statement, he confirmed. To it, I'd just add to it, I'd just add um, that it's fascinating to me that there's been so much comment about that single sex scene and so little about the multiple child murder murders. That must mean something, but I'm not sure what. Yes, Stephen... It means people are uncomfortable with these underage kids having sex with each other. Yeah. Yeah, that's that tends to rub people like, the wrong way. Like, no pun intended there. But um <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. Yeah, and I, I learned about that scene just recently. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, that's honestly I was kinda curious. <laughs> it's like I wonder how they how he how did that play out how did he write that because I've never read the book yeah I I have I mean somewhat tactfully done and I get where he was going that it was like when they were innocent as kind of children they don't like you glamorize and only remember certain things about your childhood and yeah. you have a tendency of forgetting other things that you might have done you know that's not so. something I don't think you'd forget no yeah no that's just me. They did kind of hint at it, and I'll talk more about the It review later on, but they did kind of hint at, you know, this girl, uh, Beverly, being more promiscuous. Mm. But they didn't really say anything else. All right. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little creepy. Um, My whole thing would be, when he was writing the book, there had to be maybe some other way to get them from childhood to adulthood. Mm-hmm. I mean... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm well, how up else a, were these boys supposed to become men? Pack of cigarettes. <laughs> throw beer in their hand. I don't know, something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Start. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, nobody listening will know what I just did. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's so take on that note, let's, let's take a break. Take a break. <laughs> and when we come back, um, yeah, we got quite a few reviews to get to including it and uh, uh the orville and the crap that i saw so yeah. we'll be back right after this on the historic streets of ogden there are two kinds of people readers and non-readers here's where you can find their stories booked on 25th street located at 147 historic 25th street ogden utah 84401 yeah stop by and say hi to our friend marcy you can pick up a new or used book, or you can sell your own used books. That's right. You can get 10% store credit on what they can sell the book for. Stop in and say hi, or call them at 801-529-7720. You can find them on Facebook at facebook.com slash booked on 25th, or you can email them at marcy at booked on 25th.com, or visit their website, booked on 25th.com. Be sure to tell them that World War G sent you. Now back to the episode. And we're back. And we got reviews plenty. Up the wazoo. Mm-hmm. Up the duff. Yes. Coming out of our ears. Yeah. Uh, let's kick it off with it. Went and seen this. Now you've seen it. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Uh, uh, I see yeah. what you did there. Yeah. yeah. Um, Question is, did you like it? Overall, yeah. Like, there's a lot of hype surrounding this one, and I was, like, on the fence um, about because I'd seen the Poltergeist remake, yeah. and it wasn't all that great. And they've tried to do remakes with, like, Blair Witch and some mm-hmm. of these other ones that – they don't always pan out, but this one actually seemed to work because they made it their own. Oh, it's it's huge. Oh yeah, it has. Didn't like, you try to get like a ticket to see the movie, and it yeah, was I, sold I couldn't, out. I couldn't. I couldn't get into it. Um, and I work at a movie theater, and I yeah. couldn't get into it. Um, yeah, it has like the biggest opening of 
any horror film ever. I mean, it's made, I think to date, 130 million or something like that. And that's just like week over the weekend. Over the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's nuts how much money this movie's made. And it's only going to make more. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm thinking it's going to be up there and out for quite some time, which is kind of odd because it, they released it before Halloween. Mm. You know, that it could have still been a good good contender closer to Halloween or on Halloween, but they perhaps they're thinking that it's going to be out in theater still around like Halloween. Or maybe there's other movies coming out that they didn't want to compete with around there. Or, mm-hmm. I don't know. Anyways, this movie, it kind of focuses on our six or seven kids. Um, Originally, without giving too much... I'm trying really hard not to give any spoilers away, but it's hard to talk about this one without doing so. Um, Georgie gets taken and disappears, and it's up to his brother. You know, a year later, he's still trying to investigate and trying to figure out where his brother went to and so he leads a team of some of his friends on an adventure to try to locate him um along the way they get a few other kids that join their join their crew um ben in particular oh which it's man these bullies they are so brutally mean to him. They grab this kid and they like start like lifting oh, the, up his shirt. The fat start, kid. Yeah, yeah. They start cutting into his mm-hmm. stomach. It's pretty dang brutal. Yeah, I but saw that. the dynamic between these kids actually works so dang well. It's like a revamped, updated Goonies. It reminded me so much of Goonies because mm-hmm. they're like playing off of each other and joking. And it had uh, what's the kid? What's his name from? Um, Stranger Things. Mm, Flynn Wolfhard. Flynn, yes, thank you. Um, he did a fantastic job. He was probably one of the shining lights in this whole movie. Yeah. Um, so then they kind of start putting the pieces together that every 27 years, um, this creature, this entity that takes the form of whatever scares them, um, comes around and feeds on fear. But, you know, if they're not fearful and they're out to kill it, which eventually ends up, or they're trying to, they're trying to kill it. Um, it, it's so funny you say it, you know, mm-hmm. Pennywise, yeah. they're trying, they're trying to kill Pennywise and yeah, which leads them down into these sewer tunnels and it gets pretty dang dark. And they even did a fantastic job in the middle of the day. It was still kind of horrific when you did see Pennywise like everything just kind of like they gave you tunnel vision and they gave it kind of they started getting darker surrounding him and surrounding the environment yeah um I thought they did there was there was some jump scares and there's some other tense moments but this movie really once it got going uh again didn't let up like some of these other horror movies um Overall, I thought the the kids were like definitely the stars of the movie, and they did a great job. And with the like even su- the supporting cast, um, Pennywise, yeah, he was pretty. It was pretty trippy. Um, they did pay homage. There's a YouTube video you can watch after you've seen the movie um, that it talks about all these little things, these Easter eggs that they threw in there. Um, and there was a ton of them. It was ridiculous how many they threw in there. There's one in particular that doesn't give anything away. The um, the boys they go into this house and they start investigating it, and they do that stupid thing that every like dumb horror movie character does. Split up. Yes. Yep. And then they start hearing they start hearing vo- their voices and calling to them. So like, oh, let's walk down this scary ass hallway and, like, <laughs> and let's see what's down there. I'm like, no, you stick together, yes. guys. You stick together. There's safety in numbers. Um, and they start doing that. So the this one boy he goes off by himself, and then the door obviously shuts behind him, locks mm, him in there. Sure. And he's afraid of clowns, and because they're all talking about their fears, which, oh, man. With Pennywise around, I don't think I'll be talking about my fears, no. you know. But he's afraid of clowns, and he gets put in this whole like area where there's a, a ton of clowns and a coffin, 
at the very mm-hmm. end. So he starts walking towards the coffin. Of course. To, to open it up to see what's inside. Why wouldn't you? Right? But, okay, off to the left, they did show one of the original, like, um, Tim uh, Tim Curry's. Yeah. Yeah. They showed his, they had his character. Oh, that's cool. You know? And some of, just some of the other things that they were wearing, like different shirts and um, that tied in. And Yeah. Yeah, they, they did a good job. Um, overall... I thought it was a I thought it was a pretty decent movie. I would probably it wasn't the scariest movie that I've seen. Um, but I would say it did have some really dark themes and unsettling. It was more unsettling than it was scary. Now before we get too far, you did say that you were going to talk a little bit about Beverly. Mm-hmm. Because oh, yeah, we were yeah, talking yeah. about okay. yeah. Beverly um, like one of the other kids that's in there, his mom kind of allude. She's just like, "Oh, I've heard about you, Beverly. Beverly, you know, you're kind, of, you're kind of a skank, and you, you know, supposedly slept with this other kid, and then you slept with you slept with all these kids." And she's just like, "No, like, no, I've only ever kissed like, you know, I've only ever kissed one other boy." Yeah. And yeah, there's some love interest, but it doesn't seem like too forced, and yeah. it actually works, okay. but. Um, they also, there's a couple of different other things. Um, no, yeah, I guess I can't really get into it, but I would say out of five, uh, killer clowns, Mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty obvious choice. Um, I'm sitting at about three, I would say. Yeah. It was pretty solid. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it's, it's every showing at a theater has just been out of control um Mm -hmm. and uh yeah and there are people that i've I've seen on and we were talking about this a little bit before we started but there are people that are like i'm I'm not seeing this movie i can't see this no i'm i'm too scared to see this movie i'm like it's an adult it's a movie Yeah. yeah and you're an adult like do not know how movies work yeah like that's an actor in makeup his name is Bill Skarsgård. Go Google him. Yeah. He's been in a couple of good movies. But Atom- that... Atomic Blanc. Yeah. That, that, I never understood that. Although it was kind of funny because I just recently watched this YouTube video One of my that one of my friends recommended. It showed an interview because I guess originally none of them, they filmed the scene separately. Mm. So they got the kids' actual reaction to Heard about when they that. first saw Pennywise to begin with. Yeah. And they lo- they come across as terrified. And even in the interview, one of the kids is like, it it was like horrific. And then it wasn't until he was wearing like a tank top getting a cup of coffee with his mask on <laughs> that then I was just like, okay, that's maybe not so scary. <laughs> but, He's just yeah. a dude. Yeah. Yeah. They kind of pulled a Alfred Hitchcock, you know, with like the birds, mm-hmm. where she wanted they wanted that initial how they would actually react, right? So, all right. Um, so from a good movie to a not good movie, <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I couldn't get in to see it anywhere at the theater I was in. I had a very limited window in which to go see it that day. So instead, I went and saw Home Again. With Reese Witherspoon. There's like, you're the only person in the theater? There's about 12. Conservatively, okay. there's about 12. Yeah. Now, this is a romantic comedy? Question um, mark? The premise is basically this. Reese Witherspoon plays this uh, woman who is in her 40s, uh, separated from her husband, and is starting to have kind of a midlife crisis. Um, she, like her, her, her life isn't at where she thought it would be and blah, 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 blah. We've seen it all before. So then, uh, the other part of it is there's these three guys, these three filmmakers who are in LA, um, trying to get this movie off the ground. Well, it turns out Reese Witherspoon's character, you know, she's turning 40, so she goes out to dinner with her friends, and these three guys happen to be at the same bar. They run into each other, get to talking, and they all end up going back to her place, and and that's how they all kind of end up together. Um, 
Now, Reese Witherspoon's father was like this famous filmmaker back in the day. And so one of the guys happens to stumble onto his room that had all of his, you know, his Oscar and his Emmys and all of his you know, movie stuff. And, and so there's a little tie in there. And what ends up happening is they end up staying in her guest house um, to kind of – until they get their um, movie started. And one of the main guys ends up falling for her and they have a little affair and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Then her husband comes back into town and, oh, no, what are we going to do now? It's pretty much the basic premise of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> is there any redeeming qualities about it? Like acting? The acting's f- fine. I mean, it's, it's Reese Witherspoon, you know, she's fine. Um, eh, she's good looking at best. She's good looking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not fine. I wouldn't say fine. <laughs> Candace Bergen is in it and she's fine. Michael Sheen is in it. He's fine. Um, the, the three main dudes, everybody, it's all very much in the middle like if you were to ask yeah. me a year from now yeah what was the movie home again about i'd say i have no idea did no. i see that i don't know <laughs> yeah it's so forgettable it's like a like a space saver between good movies it's like mm-hmm. well i have nothing else might well go see this i guess um but yeah, from from minute one, you know where this movie is going. I mean, if you've seen enough romantic comedies, yeah. Once once they really start getting into it, you're like, oh, this is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. And you can you can uh, predict the entire film, right? Um, <clears throat> so based on that, out of five, uh. Five. Can't see. There wasn't really anything like really stood out. Um, five Reese Witherspoons. All right. Um, yeah, I'm like at one and a half. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's it's so forgettable and so mundane and boring and tedious and just don't see it. Just don't see it. So. <sighs> All right, from movies to, to te- te- television, yeah, TV, television, whatever. Mm. Tomato, tomato, <laughs> whatever. Right. Um. So Seth MacFarlane, he heard of him, right? You might have heard of him before. He decided to because Paramount said no, we don't want you to film a Star Trek with like human, like human people mm. that are just kind of have like that are flawed. Um, he's just like, fine, I'll take it over to Fox and make it my own, make it, make it myself. And I'll even star in it. Yeah. Um, this is Orville and it's just that he's a, he's a former captain that his wife, he has, has an affair with somebody else. He walks in on it, um, and kind of just like leaves and finally turns his life around where he gets the opportunity to command his own ship. And his supporting cast, they're actually pretty dang um, pretty dang decent and actually have some character and some depth to them. Um, that'll be kind of, that'll be kind of interesting and they like play off of each other pretty well. Um, the only problem is is after he becomes commander, uh, it turns out that his ex-wife is going to be his uh, his first lieutenant. <laughs> yeah, so you've got be, that dynamic. Yeah, going to be his number one, yeah. as Jean-Luc Picard would say. So you've got that going for it. And I was actually surprised at – I was worried that it was just going to be like toilet humor joke after toilet humor joke. Oh, Seth MacFarlane. Yeah. yeah. Surprisingly, it wasn't. They had one joke where his second in command is like this alien who kind of looks like, uh, what's the dude? Is it, man, I don't know. I'm going to get some flack from you here. What's, Spock. Is it Worf. Spock? Worf. Data. Worf. Thank you. That's kind of, he's got like the um, bone down the middle. Kind of head ridges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Worf. Worf. 
Worf esque character that says that he only urinates once a year and he's just like, Really? I'm up two or three times a night. <laughs> like that was as bad as potty humor as it was, which I was kind of yeah. surprised. But his take on it is you've got all these guys and as soon as they come out of like uh the academy, they become perfect and they work together and they don't have any type of flaws. This, on the other hand, each one of them's kind of got their own issues and, you know, they were banned and now they have to try to work together. So it is kind of a parody on, on Star Trek. Then. Most definitely, yeah. which I actually think that you would really enjoy. Oh, I'm sure I would. Uh, yeah, it, it's fantastic. They do a good job of like paying homage to it and they've got some quirky... Uh, things about it um it kind of reminds me of the new star trek movies you know uh jj abram movies and star trek had a baby with like a comedy tv show with family guy with family guy yeah, yeah. more or less mm -hmm. all right it's actually pretty dang decent and i'm probably gonna continue to watch it that's what I hear. Um, I heard that Seth wasn't happy with how they were marketing it. They were marketing it as like this wacky comedy, mm -hmm. um, and 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 he said, and and you you know back this up that it's really not. No, yeah, it's kind of a drama more than anything. Um, they do have some pretty funny, interesting. Like there's some funny, quirky parts. Like they get this villain on the screen, and he's just like, "Hey, do you mind stepping over? Like just three steps to the right. Like oh, it's just weird. Like like you're not in the center of the screen, you know. And just kind of like these other like stupid little things. But, right. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll definitely check it out. Um, at least give it a watch. I think it's actually gonna do. Yeah. No, when, really well. when I saw it, I was excited for it. I'm like, that, that's great. Because I know Seth MacFarlane is a giant Star Trek fan. Oh, yeah. He's huge. Yeah. Um, and so, so he's like, going to do it justice. Yeah, he'll do it justice. That's good. So out of, uh, what are you giving it? The out first of, episode, obviously. Um, I'm sitting at about, uh, probably close to two and a half, three. Okay. About, yeah. I don't know what of. But mm. that's good for a pilot episode. All right. Um, so something we both watched, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Okay. Well, to preface this or to preface this. Yeah. I'll yeah. get the word eventually. Um, I have seen the um, manga and I've also seen the animated like anime that they did of this, of Death Note. Yes. And... So I thought it'd be kind of interesting to see what you thought of it, you know, having no prior knowledge to yeah. it and just going in as a standalone. You don't have anything to compare it to. Yeah. So. I knew Death Note. I knew of Death Note and I knew what it, that, what it was about. Mm -hmm. um, like I, I've, I'd seen Ryuk in several other things. I think I saw him like Comic-Con and stuff like that. Yeah. So I had a basic idea. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this was an original Netflix movie. And it focuses on this character of Light. Uh, that's his name. Light, uh, what was his last name? Turner? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And he's kind of, kind of a, I'd call him kind of a little bit of a social outcast in his school. He's kind of picked on a little bit. Um, even when he tries to stand up for people, he gets punched in the face. And what ends up happening is after, said beating one said beating he gets this book just falls out of the sky and it says death note on it it's like oh that's weird so he opens it up and he starts reading it and he sees all these different uh rules right it says uh you know if you write a name in this book um the person will die uh you can get more and more specific as mm -hmm. far as how they actually die, you know, cause of death. Yeah, but all you have to know is a face and a name. That's it. Um, so yeah, and, and and then it develops into a moral thing of should he do this? Should he not do this? Should any person have this much power? And right. So then you're introduced to Ryuk, who's a uh, death demon. Mm -hmm. basically, um, who is kind of encouraging him to do this and keep going, keep going. 
because because he becomes bored like you know and where he where he's from and they go into a little bit more depth of this other you know hell that that he's from yeah that after so many years he's just like yeah let's see what would happen if i give them the power that i have mm. yeah um yeah but that's the premise of the of the movie um is it okay let me first start out with this kid if you can call i don't even know how old he is he seems older than high school age but he he puts Almost puts Nicolas Cage to shame oh, when it comes to overacting. When he was like first scared by seeing right, yeah, yeah, that high pitched scream he was doing, <laughs> like falls over everything. Yeah, um, the acting from him is terrible. Yeah, he's a horrible actor. Um, the, uh, Willem Dafoe as Ryuk is good. He's like the one redeeming mm-hmm. quality about it all. Except for I kept seeing Green Goblin. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, Ryuk, Ryuk himself looked cool. The way he did it, the way they did they him They translated cool. that pretty well. Yeah. yeah. It's just everything else around this. Um, I mean, everything... Okay. Everything... The, the, the plot moved along so quickly. It's like that it problem, did. solve the problem. Problem, solve the problem. Yeah, it, I mean, this is seriously like a 50 something um episode. Yeah. Like original anime. And to condense it down into one movie, this was one of my biggest concerns yeah. is that they were just going to rush through everything. Although the only problem with the anime is it kind of went a little bit longer towards the very end, but then it had kind of a redeeming breaking bad moment where you're like, Oh, I can forgive all this other stupid stuff. I had to watch through for these last couple of episodes. Yeah. Um, a, a perfect example of what I'm talking about with the plot, just steamrolling ahead. So you got this like detective that comes in L L mm-hmm. who always wears this mask now because he doesn't want anybody to know who he is. Now yeah. of course you know in order to kill somebody in his book you have to have a face and a name. Right. So if you don't have his face, yeah, and his name's only L, so yeah, you don't have either one. Yeah, and all of a sudden, I mean he's he's deemed as like this genius when it comes to detective work, and within like. I don't know, 10 minutes of, uh, he's of getting the case. Yeah, he knows he's exactly where he's at. Yeah. yeah. He knows exactly what's going on. He He's like, oh, I think uh, I, I think he, he'd only kill people if he knows his name and the face. I'm like, how did you get that? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. That happened a little bit in the anime as well. It's like he's yeah. just jumping to all these conclusions. I'm like, all right, that's. That he's actually spot on about, you yeah. know? Like, occasionally you that's, could be right about, like, 10 or 20%, yeah. but, like, 90, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. That's, like, godlike level of... Intelligence. Uh, yeah. yeah, detective work. I mean, that's that's more than... That's above Batman type yeah. of stuff. That's saying something. I mean, yeah, that, that kind of stuff was ridiculous. And it happened throughout the entire thing. It did. Not just once. Like, they, they, sh- they made it over the top. Yeah. And... It got it got convoluted. It it the story ended up really not making a whole lot of sense. Um, he it, you know at the at the very end. I mean spoilers. I'm like you're gonna watch this anyway. <laughs> but the very end when you see that everything that's happened, he wrote down in the death note. Right. Um. I mean, like, he wrote down like an entire two paragraphs in like what's a happen. minute and a half. Right? Yeah. Um, he did kind of get toward pretty frantic towards the end. He did. It, yeah. it, it just then he had this girlfriend who liked him but wanted the book, but liked him, but also wanted the book. That didn't make any sense. And that was not the case in the anime. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's it wasn't good. It was it was it, it gave me a headache. <laughs> <laughs> I was just sitting there watching this thing like this. This well, doesn't make which any then sense. Ended up turning it off and started watching, you know, uh, National Treasure. Yeah. <laughs> like ah, finally something with substance. Yeah. <laughs> that has a plot. <laughs> yeah, it it wasn't good. I mean, out of out of five death notes, death notes, yeah, I would give it maybe maybe one. 
I'm sitting at one and a half just because I like to see it bring, you know, it brought to the big screen yeah. more or less. And see, that's the thing. I had never seen the anime. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't have anything compared to, but as a standalone thing, trying to tell this story, they failed completely. They, they did a little, like, they did all, like, it was difficult and painful to watch, but having already known everything about it, it made it a little bit more bearable because you didn't. You could introduce these characters that nobody had any prior knowledge right. to, and I'd still be like, "Oh, okay." So you were able to kind of more fill in the blanks. Mm-hmm. Oh, see. Yeah. See, that would have been nice. <laughs> Maybe I would have liked it a little, little Maybe better than because, better, but not much. Yeah. It didn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Which is disheartening because there's so many other. That's what that's what's difficult is a lot of these awesome like Miyazaki films or different animes that are amazing and like and work so well, but they work so well. Be, but you have to kind of know Japanese writing style, and they're they've got a different. I mean, they take these simple problems and kind of actually make them endearing. Yeah, their their storytelling human like oh yeah is yeah. a lot different than ours is. It is, and it doesn't always translate well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so I think that was probably the biggest problem with this. It just it didn't it didn't quite translate. I don't think for an American audience. No. Okay, so to summarize, it go see it. Home again, don't see it. Orville, go see it. Or watch it. Uh, Death Note, don't see it. There you go. Um, One final thing that we need to talk about. Yes. 3-Bit. Yeah, we, um, on Labor Day, we uh, took a lunch, as they say. We Our had a little... people met their people. Mm-hmm. We had a little podcaster lunch with, um, with John you. from the 3-Bit Gamer Show. Now, these guys, you can look them up on iTunes and, and, and Google and all your podcasting sites. Uh, they talk about strictly video games. And they're kind of, okay, so you've got X96. For those yes. based out of Utah, they'll know the radio station X96. Yeah. They do a weekly segment. Um, wh- well, one of the guys does a weekly segment. Monthly. 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 Sorry, monthly. Yeah. Um, where all the him and his buddies get together and talk about geeky, nerdy things and um, pop culture. Mm. Uh, the Geek Show. Uh, but they needed oh, a- the, Oh, sorry. You're talking about that. Yeah, weekly. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I thought, sorry. I thought it was weekly. Yeah. Okay. So they have that, but they don't get into video games too often. So they were lacking in that area, and they needed a three-bit gaming. Right. Um, John had won a contest, right? He did. He did. Yeah. Uh, and I wish I would have told him this, but yeah, X96 had a gaming guy on there. Uh, for And that was the monthly segment I was talking about. Mm-hmm. Where you'd come on, you talk about upcoming video games, blah, 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 you know, what you should play. Uh, and then he ended up moving. And so the producer came up with this idea. Well, let's have kind of this competition, um, kind of this elimination to see who would take over this gaming spot. They all had to, you know, play through Mario. and Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't remember what it was. Um, but I was actually invited to go. I actually submitted my name, kind of my credentials, I guess you could say. And they asked me to come in and try it out. I wasn't able to make it. I don't yeah. remember why, but I wasn't able to make it. Um, and he ended up, I think it was John, pretty sure. Yeah, but he ended up, you know, kind of winning that competition. And so every month now on X96, he comes on and he talks about, you know, same thing, video I'm games. Video games and, yeah. yeah, what you should look at and what you should play and that sort of thing. Um, and so the 3-Bit Gamer Show is... Uh, put on by Broadway Media, who does Geek Show, who does X96. So they're all kind of in that. They're spinoff, right. basically. Yeah, and we had uh, lunch with him. Um, we were talking about doing kind of a crossover type of a thing, um, which I think will happen in mid-October. Yeah, October around the 19th or 26th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking. Mid to late October, uh, which we should be on the 3-Bit Gamer Show, so... We'll see how that goes. That'll be pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Look forward to that. Um, maybe we'll we'll link it up with one of our episodes, and we'll make it like a super episode, and 
but we'll we'll see what happens. So things are things are working. Yeah, the wheels are spinning here at World War G. Big things in the horizon mm-hmm. in the future. All right. Um, in the meantime, here's where you can find all, all of our episodes. You can find us at worldwarg.podbean.com. You can find us on iTunes and the Google Play Store. Just search World War G. Also, if you do go to iTunes, please leave us a review and a rating. That always helps. It helps us out. Uh, on the social media, you can find us at facebook.com slash World War G podcast. On Twitter and Instagram, you can find us at WWG Podcast. You can find our shirts and the rest of our merchandise at shop.spreadshirt.com slash World War G. Uh, you can email us anytime. Day or night. At worldwgpodcast at gmail.com. So, this has been World War G episode 144. That has been AJ. And that has been Troy. Stay geeky, my friends.